Hi everyone! Welcome to the week 2 video for Axi 232. In terms of what we talked about this week, we were continuing talking about survival models. We started off with looking at some conditions on Sx of t for it to be a valid survival model. So there were some technical conditions, um, including finite mean invariance for the random variable, it's got to be differentiable, and a couple of other logical conditions, such as it's got to be a non-increasing function, and if we evaluate it at t equals zero, that probability has to be one, because we're not looking into the future at all. Certainly, the life is alive right now. The next thing we mentioned was the force of mortality, and this is a really important concept in actuarial science. The force of mortality mu x, we actually graphed what that looks like for real human mortality. There are a couple of interesting features of that graph, including the accident bump at around age 25. And the force of mortality is useful because it's easy to model that directly and then turn that into the rest of the survival model. So the definition of mu x, or mu x plus t, is actually a limit of a probability divided by an interval length. And we're taking the limit as that interval length goes to zero. So mu x itself is not a probability. Mu x times an interval length is a probability. If we had a certain small interval, let's say one day, then mu x divided by 365 would be the probability of someone dying the day that they turn age x. So somewhere in that period of a 1 over 365th of a year. We looked at five different relationships that exist between mu x and mu x plus t with the remaining functions that we know about a survival model. So we had two ways each of getting mu x and mu x plus t from the other three functions, s and little f, namely, we really didn't talk about big F much. And then we had one, the fifth and most important relationship, is how to get s from mu x. So that last one is probably the most important relationship. If we can figure out mu x, from data or however we model it, then we can get the rest of the survival function by using that fifth relationship. And finally, the last thing we looked at was the bizarre and weird and very useful actuarial notation. So three particular items we looked at were tpx, and that's simply the probability that a life age x right now survives at least t years. tqx is the opposite of tpx, and that's looking at the probability that a life age x right now doesn't make it to t years in the future. So obviously in this case, tpx and tqx are mutually exclusive events and one of them has got to occur. Either they're going to survive that t time period or they're not. So tqx plus tpx equals 1. And finally the third thing is looking at a deferred probability of dying during a period of length t, starting with a life age x again, but we're looking at this period u years into the future. So u deferred tqx is really the probability that a life age x dies between u and t plus u years from now. In other words, they die between age x plus u and age x plus u plus t. A little complicated. And we also looked at a number of ways to express this in terms of those other two actuarial notations. And that was everything for this week. So hope you're having a good weekend, and see you on Monday.